Today you will be learning about the disease called smallpox. The word variola, or another word for smallpox, come from the Latin word various, meaning stained or mark on the skin. Just an overview of what you will learn in this presentation. We'll obviously learn about the organism, its signs, its symptoms, and how one can get it. We'll learn about the history and how it was used in warfare. We'll also learn about the variolation and the vaccine history and then about the vaccine itself. So first let's talk about the organism. Smallpox is a serious infectious disease caused by the varroa virus. It is a double-stranded DNA virus in the genus Orthopox virus. Smallpox it is, is a disease that can be caused by varroa major or minor. So there are two types of smallpox, um, but the more common one is varroa major, which is very severe, a harsh rash, higher temperature, and varroa minor is not as severe and a little less common. The smallpox you've heard of in the past when you think of smallpox is probably varroa major. You see the horrible rashes on the skin, you see people dying, really. Um, also, smallpox is stable outside of the host so it does retain its infectivity so it doesn't necessarily have to be in somebody to get someone else sick but it does appear as a rash of small pink bumps all over the body it usually starts around the mouth and the eyes and then um, to the arms and then the trunk of the body so now let me tell you a little bit about the history of smallpox. So smallpox is believed to have appeared around 10,000 BC. Um, presumably the introduction of camels to Africa and the changes in the climate were the factors that triggered the evolution of cowpox into smallpox. So it came from another pox virus. In the 18th century, smallpox was the cause of death of more than 400,000 people in Europe each year. So that's an estimated infection of 300 million people just in the 20th century. It circulated in the human population for many centuries and caused repeated large-scale epidemics. So let's talk about some signs and symptoms that you would have if you acquired the smallpox virus but don't worry because it is eradicated so no worry about getting it so the first sign and signs and symptoms are high fever body aches and severe malaise which is just the feeling of achiness discomfort it's it's the feeling of getting sick then after that small red spots appear in the mouth and on the tongue and around the time the sores in the mouth start breaking down, a rash appears on the skin, um, starting on the face usually. It then spreads to the arms and legs and then to the hands and feet. Usually the rash spreads to all parts of the body within about 24 hours. As the rash appears, the fever usually does fall though. On day one and two of the rash, um, the bumps are usually fluid or pus filled. And then around the time of day eight or nine, the bumps start to get hard, round, and very deep. They're very painful. How is this disease transmitted? So how could you or I acquire this disease? So it is an airborne communicable disease, so it travels from person to person via infective droplets. So coughing, sneezing, saliva, or any mucous membrane. If a healthy person comes in contact with someone that is infected and they sneeze or they cough or any mucus gets on a healthy person, it could infect them. Also, contaminated clothing or bedding may also transmit the virus. Smallpox also spreads most readily during the cool, dry winter months due to everyone staying inside and having close contact. The speed of transmission of smallpox is generally slower than most diseases, yet is highly contagious. The incubation period for this disease is about 7 to 17 days in which the infected person is not contagious. 
A person with smallpox is only contagious when the rash breaks out until the rash disappears. So now that we know how deadly smallpox it is and how horrible it is, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the warfare and how smallpox was used in war. So the devastating effects of smallpox gave rise to one of the first examples of biological warfare. It was used as a biological weapon during the French and Indian War, which is 1754 to 1767. A letter was written in 1763 by Sir Geoffrey Amherst, which is, who was the commander in chief of British forces in America. He suggested grinding the scabs of smallpox pustules into the blankets and then the British soldiers would distribute the blankets to the American Indians which would in turn infect them. Also in the 1980s the Soviet Union developed a varroa or smallpox as an aerosol biological weapon which they intended to be used for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Since routine smallpox immunizations had stopped in the United States in about 1972 and in most other countries by 1983, the population of the world was extremely vulnerable to the disease. Most of the world's population had never been vaccinated, or if they had been vaccinated, it was so long ago that the immunity had declined. So let's talk about virulation. Virulation is the deliberate inoculation of an uninfected person with the smallpox virus. So in layman's terms, you have a healthy person and you basically give them smallpox, but in a very small dose so that they know how to, their body knows how to fight it off. This was before the era of vaccines. So this was how doctors tried to protect the people of the small towns and the patients. This method of virulation was actually started when physicians realized that smallpox survivors became immune to the disease. The physicians would take samples, which is pus, ground scabs, vesicles, from benignly diseased patients and introduce the material into susceptible or healthy patients. Physicians had hoped that since the virus was so small and they gave a healthy person such a small amount that the healthy person's body would recognize the disease and learn how to fight it off. In China, healthy people actually took pills made from the fleas of cows to prevent smallpox because earlier we learned that most people believe that smallpox is derived from cowpox. So when people took the pills, they thought it would prevent smallpox. And this is actually the first recorded example of oral vaccination. About 100 years later in China as well, people got the scabs, turned them into powder, and then they were blown into the nostrils of healthy people through a tube. This is another example of variolation at the time. In India, there was many different forms of variolation, but one of the most common was the application of scabs or pus from a person with smallpox to the intact or scarred skin of a healthy person. Children were exposed to the organism from people with a very mild case and various forms of the material from people with smallpox were administered to healthy adults. Usually children have a lower or weaker immune system, so they can't take as much. Usually adults have a stronger immune system, so their body can fight it off easier, even if it's stronger. Lady Mary Wortley Montague, who was an English aristocrat, was actually responsible for the introduction of virulation into England. She had an episode of smallpox in 1715 that really disfigured her face. She was so determined to prevent smallpox that she demanded they inoculate her five-year-old son and her four-year-old daughter. This was the first professional virulation performed in England. So she put her children at risk without knowing the results, but it ended up working. Virulation soon reached the US, which actually was known as the New World at this time. And in 1721, virulation was used to stop the smallpox epidemic in Boston. 
by 1777, George Washington actually had all of his soldiers verilated before they began new military operations. Also, all over the world, people noticed a trend. And it was well known that milkmaids, who dealt with cows on the daily basis, became immune to smallpox after developing cowpox. So everything kind of makes sense with how it's derived from cows. And then everywhere around the world, all the milkmaids were immune to the disease. So let's talk about the history of the vaccine. So vaccination was done by using pustule fluid, and this spread rapidly. By 1800, it had reached most European countries, and about 100,000 people had been vaccinated worldwide. By 1801, over 100,000 people in just England had been vaccinated. Cows were actually first used for the vaccination production in the 19th century. So they would scrape the scabs from the belly of the cow to create the vaccines. The first vaccination in the US, however, was performed by Benjamin Waterhouse, who was a professor at Harvard Medical School. He vaccinated his five-year-old son and six servants. Now I'm gonna tell you about the most recent smallpox vaccine. The only prevention for smallpox is a vaccination. The vaccine is actually derived from calf lymph and was used in the United States up until 1972. The actual vaccine does not carry the smallpox virus. When getting the vaccination, the needle is dipped into the vaccine and then the vaccinee, so the person who is being vaccinated, is to be jabbed two to three times on the upper arm. Physicians know that the vaccination was successful if a red itchy bump develops on the vaccination site in about three to four days. The smallpox vaccination provides high level of immunity for three to five years and then decreasing immunity thereafter. If a person becomes vaccinated again, the immunity lasts even longer. So who should not get the vaccine? So if you have eczema or atopic dermatitis, you should not get the vaccine. People with burns, chickenpox, shingles, impetigo, herpes, severe acne or psoriasis should not get the vaccine until their illness has actually cleared up or healed. Anyone with a weakened immune system should definitely not get this vaccine. So if you're having cancer treatment, if you've had an organ transplant, HIV, or if you're on any medications to treat an autoimmune disease or any other illness that can weaken the immune system. The last people that should not get this vaccination are the elderly or the extremely young patients like babies to two to three years old or women that are pregnant or plan to become pregnant within one month of the vaccination. And if a woman just had a baby and they are breastfeeding, they should also not get the vaccination. Despite all the people who should not get the vaccination, if someone has been directly exposed to the smallpox virus, they should get the vaccination regardless of their health issues. But the people of today don't really need to worry about that because the last known case was in Somalia in 1977, and then smallpox was declared eradicated in 1980 following the global immunization campaign held by the World Health Organization. So what did we learn? We learned that smallpox is an infectious disease caused by the virola virus. It is very contagious, and it usually appears as a rash of small pink bumps. It is airborne and communicable. Also, it's been around since 10,000 BC and caused hundreds of millions of deaths. It was devastating. It's also been used as biological warfare. And it is known that milkmaids and smallpox survivors are immune to the disease. The first virulation was in China and then in India. And the vaccine is the only way to prevent smallpox. But the best thing of all, smallpox is eradicated. And last but not least, these are my citations that I used to find all this great and helpful information to do this presentation.